think home means to me what it, what it means to everybody. And it's a place where you feel safe, you're protected, you know you can rely on a, a food source and, and family. There's generations and generations that have, that have grown up in Vail. And I think the same applies to the bighorn sheep. Historically, knowing about bighorn sheep in Colorado, the Goreen sheep are a native herd. They're endemic here. It's pretty unique to have that right here in our backyard in Vail and this community. The bighorn sheep, it's an iconic American symbol, right? That animal is endemic to our continent, right? It's a North American animal. And I think that anybody that sees it really in their mind, it should sort of conjure ideas of wilderness and, and freedom, resiliency and, and power, you know, to live in those kind of places. You know, you see these, these sheep at, at, you know, high up on the mountainside in some really inhospitable places. Um, and it, it's kind of this icon of, of the Rocky Mountains to a certain extent, hearing them cracking, cracking horns together during the rut, echoing down some of these you know, steep drainages, it's, it's pretty cool. Bighorn sheep are uh, not only an iconic species, they're a, a keystone species. Uh, bighorn sheep are doing well, other species tend to be doing well. There has to be a very specific set of biological conditions, geographical considerations for these animals to exist on the landscape. If they don't have access to steep escape terrain, access to cliffs, uh, certain south-facing aspects in the winter months, they just won't exist on the landscape. I think one of the worst things that could happen in Vail and to our community is that some of the longtime locals say there used to be bighorn sheep up there, and now there's not. So 200 years ago, bighorn sheep were prevalent across North America, with some estimates at around 2 million sheep. By 1915, due to disease, hunting, and habitat encroachment, there were only 7,000 bighorns left. By 1979, there were only 2,200. Today, due to conservation efforts, we've rebounded back to about 7,000 animals. And it's similar to elk, where we used to see 1,000 head of elk. And now we're lucky if we see 10. So I think it's important for us to embrace that right now. We indoctrinate this into our community, into our culture, that we are the stewards of these bighorn sheep and their habitat on into the future. The local population has certainly had ebbs and flows over the last 20 to 30 years. Historically, they were in the triple digit. Uh, more recently, there was um, what we call an all age class uh, mortality event due to um, a, a really bad winter. You know, the, the herd's probably sitting between 50 and 60 individuals at this point, so, you know, we're nowhere near what historical numbers had been. Wildlife managers and scientists agree that the primary limiting factor for bighorn sheep in Colorado today is the risk of disease transmission between domestic sheep and wild sheep on public lands throughout the western half of the state. Domestic sheep carry pathogens, bacteria, that are novel to bighorn sheep, and when they come into contact with bighorn sheep, they can pass those pathogens on, which ultimately can result in respiratory disease in wild sheep. A lot of those rams, they'll go on a walkabout and walk 40, 50, 60 miles, and uh, they walk through a pen of domestic sheep and they transmit that disease, they're now a vector to whatever band of wild sheep they go to next. It's a shoot on site scenario because we can't take the chance of disease being spread. In the wildlife management realm, we talk a lot about limiting factors. One of those limiting factors is access, abundance, and quality of winter range. For those that are maybe unfamiliar with, with some of these limiting factors, you might look out across the Gore Range and see an abundance of habitat, and miles and miles and miles of it. But that is, is all for naught if the size and availability of your winter range equates to the size of a postage stamp. If we don't have enough winter range, lower elevation down here by the valley, it won't support more sheep. This herd's winter range is unique in that it's in close proximity to the town of Vail. This also creates friction and concern as these bighorns' future is directly tied to the decisions that are made in regards to development. So development impacts are twofold. One, it's the direct loss of habitat. You are forever changing the physical environment be it new buildings, parking lots, roads, trails, other infrastructure. And then there's the indirect impact 
We're introducing more people into this valley and that growth in human footprint radiates through the local environment. And while we want to encourage outdoor recreation and the growth of our local economies, we want to do so in a manner that is sustainable, that is conducive to perpetuating these local species forever. It's pretty simple. If we want to keep Vail a special place and home to these bighorns, then trade-offs need to be made. It's important we revisit our relationship with our environment. Development should be approached in a conscientious manner. It's the one thing we do have absolute control over and can decide if and how it takes place. We truly have the opportunity to vastly grow our bighorn sheep herds in the state and give bighorn sheep the elbow room they need to grow. The town of Vail is committed to working with the U.S. Forest Service to make sure that we prevent the domestic sheep and bighorn sheep interaction and that we protect their winter range. But in order to protect them, we needed to study them. Looking at the timeline from when we last actually had collars and, and handled these sheep, you know, we're, we're sitting at between 30 and 40 years since we've done any kind of active work and monitoring of, of these sheep. Studies like this are very important for bighorn sheep management because it helps us understand how the bighorn sheep herd utilizes the range. I think this is our, I'm still scanning. She came back up. This is blue one, orange two. I need a scope. Uh, okay. Go down into the valley, go to the trees, dark trees and the tree line going up. Go to the scree, go up above that onto that next rock bench and there's a scree pile there. And look around on that bench, she's in there. So out of the 15 collars, we, our goal was nine ewes, nine females and six rams. It took us quite a while. We worked all the way up to the spring to get the last ram collar out, but we reached our goal and we got all the collars deployed. There's critical pieces of information that are coming off of these collars um, and, and will give us insight into what areas to prioritize. So when we have proposals and projects going through the U.S. Forest Service for prescribed fire use, which is a key tool in habitat improvement and stimulating new growth. You know, we're, we're looking for actionable information and, and data points from, from these callers to help inform where we're gonna target um, some of that habitat improvement. Many of those herds, we don't have a good understanding of how they move between their summer and winter ranges, where their important lambing habitats are, and what areas are most important for us to work to protect, to preserve that herd in perpetuity. So yeah, we're, we're hopeful that the outcome of this study is going to help to bolster the herd. I think one of the interesting things about wildlife conservation and preservation is that it's primarily funded by hunting licenses. Hunting is a um it's a necessary tool and a necessary component to conservation, um, sheep hunting specifically, primarily because of the revenue that it puts directly towards wildlife. We're, we're very conservative with, with tag allocation from a, from a hunting perspective as far as how this, this herd is managed. Because bighorn sheep, are the, the tags are so limited, the opportunities are so limited, all states that have them, have a very complex system on how to acquire a tag and, and, and draw the tag. Roughly, I believe, either 40 or 50,000 applicants for 200 ram tags in the state. The tag itself that I drew this year cost me $2,300 as a non-resident. A resident only pays 320. So I've invested approximately $3,300, but if you multiply it over the 40 to 50,000 people that apply for these sheep tags, and then the, all the other, probably 100,000 people that have applied for elk tags and deer tags, like that is an immense amount of revenue that Colorado Parks and Wildlife uses to manage all wildlife, from you know, butterflies to birds, you know, to the bighorn sheep. I think as education grows and, and just as individuals, we want to conserve and protect our wildlife. Funding needs to flow in that manner as well. And I'm really excited about the Town of Vale's efforts. We now are using our community's tax dollars to go and contribute toward habitat improvement projects. 
it, it's kind of goes back to the, I guess the, the age old philosophy of it's easier to keep something than it is to, you know, keep something and nurture something rather than having to, to go back and, and reintroduce something. And our hope is to avoid that. Um, we, we don't want to have to get involved if we don't have to. And that's a very important thing for bighorn sheep herds because once a herd is extirpated, they lose that cultural knowledge that's passed down from generation to generation. It can take decades for that herd to develop that knowledge about the landscape where they're living and to be able to pass that on to future generations of, of bighorn sheep. If we can educate people how to interact with wildlife when you're out in the, in the wilderness, when we're out hiking with our dog, we make sure they're on a leash. We don't get off the trail. We adhere to trail closures, which are so important. We can support hunters and anglers and recreators alike. There is enough room for all of us, um, but we have to be careful not to love our wilderness to death. It's important for us to look at them as a group and as a species. And in the long run, I want them to stay in these mountains forever, hopefully. I have a profound respect for how these sheep exist on the landscape. You know, they don't get to go home like you and I at the end of the day. And it's truly a remarkable thing to have locally. And we should consider ourselves lucky to, to be home to these big horn. They call this place home, but they called this place home way before we ever called it home. And so it's our responsibility to make sure that, that these sheep have a place that they can call home long after we're gone.